This video is sponsored by ViewSonic. Microsoft teachers, let's talk about the five tech tools you need to be using in your classroom. The tech tool for video creation, Flipgrid. Flipgrid is a free platform for you to have video discussions with your students. You put up a question or a prompt and then your students will record a video or audio response. Then they can go see the responses that their peers left and then leave a video or text response to those responses to keep the discussion going. I think what sets Flipgrid apart is that you can make really fun looking videos. It feels a lot more like a social media app than an educational tool, which in turn is gonna get your students a lot more excited to use it. In the past, I've used Flipgrid for students to create a video presentation about an element that they chose on the periodic table, which is really nice because then we didn't have to spend a whole class period and a half just hearing everybody's presentation one after the other. But instead, everybody submitted their video responses and then I gave the class 15 minutes to go and watch several people's presentations and leave some comments and some feedback on those presentations. That got rid of not only the barrier of students generally hating getting in front of the class to speak, which is still an important skill to learn, but it allowed them to actually refine their presentation, refilm things if they wanted to, and get it to be just the way they want it as a presentable product to their peers. And learning 21st century skills of video production along the way. And that's one use case. Teachers are using Flipgrid in all sorts of capacities from progress reports to world language learning, but also for teacher professional development and community outreach. A few pretty cool features of Flipgrid is that they do create auto captions on all the videos that are made, which will really make all of your videos and your students' videos a lot more accessible to everyone in the classroom. There's a microphone mode where it doesn't record any of the video, but just the audio. So you can use that for podcasting projects, or if there are students that generally just don't want to be on camera, but want to have their voice in their presentation, they can use that. Students can even record their screen and then and have themselves in front of it, kind of like when you have a green screen, but you don't even need a green screen to be able to do this. So they can be present and visible while also explaining and showing their work. Flipgrid is owned by Microsoft, so it integrates seamlessly with Microsoft Teams. For game-based learning, Minecraft Education Edition. You've probably heard of the game Minecraft, but if not, think of it as virtual Lego blocks that you can create just about anything you want. I am not a Minecraft expert, and you do not have to be a Minecraft expert to utilize it in your classroom. I only learned just enough to understand the mechanics of the game and start getting some ideas of how it could be implemented in the classroom. And so don't worry if you don't know everything about the game because I guarantee that you will have some Minecraft experts in your classroom. Kids absolutely love Minecraft. So how exactly can you use Minecraft in the classroom? The first time I used it was in my math class as I was teaching students about cube roots. In Minecraft, I had the students build a one by one by one cube all all the way up to a 10 by 10 by 10 cube. And I had them use those models to explain why they call it a cube root and why the cube root of a thousand is 10. In my physics class, I used one of the resources by Microsoft Education called Physics Coaster and students built a roller coaster in Minecraft to explore potential and kinetic energy. In other classrooms, teachers are having students recreate worlds from the novels that they're reading using Minecraft. Others are building and exploring various ecosystems. And others are having their students create their entire Minecraft world using coding. Microsoft does have a free one hour course that'll give you everything you need to learn the general mechanics of the game and start implementing it in your classroom. There are several different versions of Minecraft and Minecraft Education Edition is the version that is optimized for classroom use. You're able to see student work a little bit more easily and you can all work and build in the same world a little bit more easily. And it is very likely if you have a school provided Office 365 account, Minecraft Education Edition will be completely free to you and your students. So if you're not sure, your school's IT department will be able to let you know. For digital whiteboarding, you need the Whiteboard app by My View Board. My View Board has a few different versions of their Whiteboard app. The one that I'm talking about right now is the one that you can download on a Windows PC. That is their most feature rich version. To get the most out of Whiteboard, you'll wanna use a device that you can write on, be it using a digital tablet, or if you've got a PC that's got a touch screen you can write on, or if you've got a view board that you can annotate directly on. In addition to being able to draw and add text and add shapes and utilize sticky notes, 
You can also choose from a pretty big selection of different backgrounds depending on what you teach. Where things get really fun is their Magic Box tool. It allows you to pull in just about anything onto your whiteboard and annotate over it. Bring in a YouTube video, pause it, and then annotate over it. Bring in a Word document or a PowerPoint document and have each slide of the PowerPoint be its own page that you can annotate over on the whiteboard. Search for an image right within the Magic Box and bring it into the whiteboard. You can set your whiteboard pages and slides up beforehand and then save it and then that way you can open it up and have everything there ready to go when you're ready to teach that lesson. And if you go through the lesson and make a bunch of annotations to it and you wanna save the whiteboard with those annotations on it, you can do that as well. What I really appreciate is the screenshot and the screen recording features that are built right into whiteboard. If I'm in class and I'm explaining a problem that I know a lot of students had trouble with, I can do a screen recording that's gonna capture both the screen and the audio of my explanation. And then when I'm done explaining it, I end the recording, the screen recording gets saved automatically to my OneDrive, all without having to open up a new app and doing this in class instead of going home and recording the videos there. And now that explanation is available not only for students who were there and want to refer back to it, but also for students who were absent and missed the explanation. Not to mention students can download the Whiteboard app onto their PCs and do all of this themselves, either turning in a screen recording of their annotations or just saving their whiteboard with annotations and turning that into you. There's an entity account for whiteboard as well that has a few extra features and the entity account is free to educators. All you need to do is fill out the entity request form to get it. One of the features on the entity account is the throw feature, which allows students to send any image or document to the whiteboard using any device. So if you have a student using their phone, they can take a picture of their work and then throw throw it up to the whiteboard and then annotate their work and explain their thinking up on the whiteboard for everyone to see. Also, the entity account allows you to set up polls and quizzes directly from your whiteboard that students can respond to on their devices. And then you can take those results and discuss them live so the students get that immediate feedback. For making content more accessible, you need to be using Immersive Reader. It's a free tool that makes written content across Microsoft apps a lot more accessible. When a student activates the immersive reader, it gets rid of a lot of the distractions around the text that they're reading so they can just focus on the actual text. You can change the text size. You can change the spacing between the text. You can change the font style and you can change the background color as well. Immersive reader also lets you set up a reading experience that will allow the student to focus either on one line at a time or a couple lines at a time. It has a built-in picture dictionary for your early learners or your English language learners. And it's got a translate feature where you can translate either one word at a time or an entire document at once. If that wasn't enough, Immersive Reader will also read the text to you in English. Mr. Jones of the Manor Farm had locked the hen houses for the night but was too drunk to remember to shut the pop holes. Or whatever language the text has been translated to. El Señor Jones, the Manor Farm, Había cerrado los gallineros por la noche. This will help your English language learners. This will help your students with dyslexia, your students with ADHD, your students who need a little bit more support with reading comprehension. But this is something that's gonna help all of your students. If you think of closed captioning on a TV show or a movie, it was likely added so that way those with a hearing disability could still enjoy the TV show. But even though me and my wife don't have hearing disabilities, we both enjoy watching TV shows with closed captioning because we feel it just makes the experience better. And not only is Immersive Reader available in Microsoft Word, one OneNote, Outlook, Edge, and Teams. It's also available in Flipgrid, Minecraft Education Edition, and the Entity version of Whiteboard by MyViewboard. For creating professional looking interactive books, you need to be using Book Creator. Book Creator is a simple way to create interactive digital books. Think of it as a multimedia supercharged book. Book Creator lets you embed audio, video, images, drawings, pretty much anything you can think of into custom made digital books that students can publish to be able to share with their classmates or make public to be able to share beyond the classroom. Plus they have a bunch of pre-created templates to help students get started because a lot of students struggle with starting with just a blank canvas. So having something that's already there that they can begin to manipulate is super helpful. And they now have app integrations on the premium version of Book Creator. 
where you can take apps like Canva and literally just open it inside of Book Creator and then embed anything you're doing in Canva right into the book that you're working on. Book Creator would be an ideal option for taking a traditional assignment like an essay or a lab report and supercharging it with multimedia. I think this would be awesome in a math class, which is not typically a class that you would think of students writing in, but you could have students reflect in their book on a problem that they had in the previous month that they found really challenging. They could include images of the first things that they tried with that problem and then an audio recording explaining why that didn't actually work the first time. Then they could use a drawing tool or a screencast and explain what they learned in their exploration of this problem and how they ended up solving it. Perfect opportunity to get them explaining these mathematical concepts as opposed to just showing the right answer. And then this book over time could serve as a fantastic portfolio of their growth as a mathematician throughout the year and to serve as a resource that fellow students or even future students could learn from. Book Creator is now fully compatible with Microsoft Edge and with their free account, you can have 40 books made. And if you need more than that, you can get up to a thousand books made for $12 a month. Several of these tools involve creating something in class. But how exactly do you structure creativity and creative projects in your classroom? I'm glad you asked. Check out this video right here where Sam actually walks you through the process of structuring these creative assignments and projects with your students. We'll see you over there.